defined careers, and they get slapped. The Boston Celtics look like a team that's on the verge of being swept. Jason Tatum humbly believed in the most humble sense that he was the best player on earth and then quickly got brought back to reality by Jimmy Butler within a week's worth of time. Unfortunately, many of us saw this coming. Jason Tatum has continued to reach the brink of absolute peak excellence when it comes to NBA history, but as he has reached that top end last season in the NBA Finals, he was outbattled by Andrew Wiggins, and this season, the Boston Celtics are ending the year in an embarrassing fashion. But on the other end, Jason Tatum has been a young superstar which is really why this has been so confusing. Not only is he a fully playoff experienced vet at this point, but in his last three seasons, in the regular season, Tatum has averaged 27.9 points per game, 8.1 rebounds, and 4.4 assists. The list of players to average over 27 points, 8 rebounds, and 4 assists per game in that age range includes just four names, neither of which are Michael Jordan or LeBron James. Instead, we have Kareem Abdul-Jabbar, Oscar Robertson and Luka Doncic. With that on paper, Jason Tatum is among historic company. And then this very season, in the second round of this year's playoffs, it seemed like Jason Tatum was finally turning the corner with a 50 point closeout performance in a game seven against the league's MVP. It felt like yet again, maybe Jason Tatum was finally putting it all together. He was finally taking the leap and becoming a playoff closer and dependable go-to star. Instead though, we have had a disaster. So at this point, the question needs to be asked, what if Jason Tatum never gets the job done. It's not like we haven't seen that before. And sadly, we have actually seen players get so in their heads from repeated playoff failures to the point where they go from regular season MVP superstars to playoff liabilities when their teams need them the most. So what's up, Mike here. And so far in his NBA career, Jason Tatum in the regular season has proven to be an upcoming Hall of Famer. There really is no denying that. And there really is no denying Jason Tatum's talent. On paper, Jason Tatum is supposed to be the kind of superstar you can build a championship contender around. But as we just saw, for whatever reason, with Jason Tatum and the Boston Celtics, that has not exactly been the case. In Jason Tatum's early playoff career, we have found repeated close chance after close chance, but ultimately we have also found failure. Sometimes in NBA history, failure can be a great thing. And make no mistake about it, Jason Tatum is still young, he's only 25. In players such as a young Kobe Bryant, someone who Jason Tatum has certainly modeled his game after, playoff losses pushed Kobe to new heights. They pushed Kobe to prove doubters wrong. As in Kobe's case, as a young player, he airballed several key shots. Roll the clip. Five seconds left, four, Bryant, drive. Pull up, shot on the way, no good. Cross court left, open Kobe Bryant for three, another air ball. Bryant for three, it's short again, seven seconds. Here's a three-pointer, air ball again. It's over, it's over. As you saw a young Kobe miss several clutch shots down the stretch, and then both he and Shaq responded with a three-peat. And then after in the 2008 NBA Finals, Kobe did not win without Shaq. He still came back, adjusted his game, adjusted his flaws. The key point here, really, and Kobe won two more championships without Shaq. On the flip side though, it has been shown to us that repeated failures in big moments can definitely cause a player to get in his own head and can cause a player's legacy to be impacted. The worst thing for a player to leave his career with is unfinished business. And looking at a list of the biggest star players turned playoff disappointments in league history, we have a lot of unfinished business and we have a lot of players who fail to address their biggest flaws. Looking at a player like Chris Webber, he was someone who really, really struggled towards the end of games. I barely want to bring it up because of how much it's impacted Chris Webber's life, but Chris Webber probably had the biggest choke moment in basketball history when he was playing with the Fab Five in the 1993 title game against the North Carolina Tar Heels. As you can see in this clip, Michigan will have to bring it. Oh, he walked. He, he walked and the referee missed it. Webber brings it into the front court. 
They have no timeouts remaining. Oh, he causes too many timeouts. That's a technical foul. Chris Webber calls a timeout that does not exist. And because of this, a technical foul was called. Free throws were given to North Carolina. The ball was given to North Carolina. The title was given to North Carolina. And Chris Webber was never the same in the fourth. If you didn't know, Chris Webber was once seen as a generational prospect. However, these end of game woes seriously haunted him. And twice as an all-star for the Sacramento Kings, Webber shot under 40% in the playoffs. Chris Webber could have left as one of the game's greatest power forwards of all time. Time. In 2001, battling against KG and Tim Duncan and Dirk, Weber averaged over 27 points per game, but because he could not get it done down the stretch, history has not remembered him as fond. But before we continue, Jason Tatum and the Boston Celtics are almost certainly not going to the NBA Finals, but you could be. That is right, we are giving away a VIP experience to game four of the NBA Finals. Roll the clip. To celebrate the launch of Coors Light, we are giving away a VIP experience to game four of the NBA Finals. Playing to Tickets, a room, incredible seats. It is all included for game four of the NBA Finals for one lucky person who is subscribed to Coors Light. The winner will be picked on June 1st. All you have to do to enter is subscribe and turn on post notifications for Coors Light. Good luck. I cannot wait to pick the winner. This is going to be incredible. Jason Tatum himself is currently in that danger zone. He's currently in the space where for some reason he has a problem blocking him from true superstar. Again, on paper, Jason Tatum has currently proven that he's on a historic path. He's also already a four-time All-Star, three-time member of the All-NBA, was the first ever Larry Bird Award winner. He has the resume of a true young superstar, but currently his fatal flaws are certainly holding him back. In this case, Tatum's fatal flaws are his ability to fully take over the game consistently, emphasis on consistently, and I'll say as a leader, the ability to demand respect from his teammates so they don't no-show huge games like this. Part of being a true superstar is the leadership and respect that comes with that. So those are the traits we expect in NBA superstar champions. But my question is, when it comes to competitive mindsets, is Jason Tatum so talented that he almost definitely must be the number one option and best player on any team he's on by default. But if he were to play with someone else, he were to play with a player who's just as talented as him, a player such as Luka or Ja, who has more of a competitive, give me the ball and get out of the way edge. Is that what Jason Tatum is really meant to be? The best, not number one guy and not number two guy, but one A or one B guy in league history. And what I mean by that is with the Golden State Warriors, Steph Curry and Kevin Durant were certainly thought of as one A and one be in either order. KD even won both finals MVPs. But looking at KD's playoff numbers when he was the true number one before he got to Steph and the Warriors, from 2013 to 2016, KD played in 48 playoff games and averaged 29.4 points per game, but shot less than 45% from the field, a costly statistic because it was drastically different than his regular season average of around 51% from the field. When you are the superstar and you are not stepping up, you're team certainly feels it. We also see KD shot drastically worse from three in this time. And I think we can all agree a dip of minus six in PER is jarring to see. KD's career at this time was marked in a very similar fashion to a young Tatum's. There were a lot of highs. Durant reached the finals at the age of 23, and he also won the MVP two seasons later. Incredible young success for Kevin Durant, but it was a bit confusing because the highs were so high and the lows were so low. KD had his tough moments for sure. So I will say with a player as young as Jason Tatum and with a player as talented as Jason Tatum, I think Kevin Durant's early struggles should be encouraging because Jason Tatum actually has a path to follow. Him. Yes, of course, the situations are not exactly the same, but early in his career, Kevin Durant had several moments that could have risen him into the discussion of a young goat. We were looking at the fourth quarter of game three of the 2012 NBA Finals, and it was here where just like a young Jason Tatum, Kevin Durant had had incredible success early on. And then in game three, KD had a chance to become that guy. The Thunder were tied with the Heat one to one. They would go on to lose the next three games, but if they won this, they would take a two to one lead. And this young team, a young Kevin Durant, Russell Westbrook, and James Harden, only with nine minutes to go, Kevin Durant finishes on this play. Here comes Harden, trying to draw a foul, lots it to Durant and the finish. High above the rim, Kevin Durant makes it a one-point game. And then disaster would strike. Durant, three-pointer, in and out. And the Thunder team right now not scoring almost four minutes. Durant, up and under, flips it up, won't go. That will do it. 
Miami will take a two to one lead. Unfortunately, Kevin Durant was not ready to step up and he struggled. The Thunder lost this one. KD shot two for six in the fourth quarter, 0 for two from the free throw line and also had two costly turnovers. OKC would lose the next two games. They lost this finals in five games total and Kevin Durant had his first lesson, but he did not immediately take this and immediately step up the next time he had a chance. Here we are in the 2014 NBA playoffs. It is the Western Conference Finals, game six. It is overtime. And here is what Kevin Durant did. Westbrook using the screen, pops it out to Durant, fires for three. Durant for three. That'll do it. The Spurs are headed to the NBA Finals. Again, before this game, he gave us the highest of highs, but ultimately he struggled. And it was the Spurs who would win the NBA championship this year. This was also Kevin Durant's MVP season, 2014. Two years after that, in game six of the 2016 Western Conference Finals, the Thunder were up by seven points with under five minutes left, only it happened again. With some help. Bad pass, Durant. In trouble of tangling from Barnes and takes the shot. A minute 25 to go. Durant for three. Rushed it. And Curry just runs it out. Coming back from a 3-1 deficit. And then finally, Kevin Durant went to the Warriors, where as 1B or 1A, however you want to believe it, with a fresh start, with a fresh roster, his scoring averages jumped up three points per game from the regular season to the playoffs with his two playoff runs with the Warriors, while his shooting numbers also stayed steady. So maybe Jason Tatum is just not that full number one without a doubt guy. Maybe he is one of the best 1A or 1B players of all time. Or maybe he is still just a young player that has taken lumps right now and is about to come back in the ultimate way. On the other side, we have this list of playoff disappointments and the most notable to me is Carmelo Anthony because on this list in terms of all of these players, Melo is the most like Tatum to me by far. And if we were to go back in time and compare a young Carmelo Anthony to a young Jason Tatum, we suddenly see that there is a real cause for concern here for not fixing one of these fatal flaws. Jason Tatum is a historically great young player. So was Melo. Carmelo Anthony was drafted number three overall by the Denver Nuggets after leading Syracuse to a national championship win as an All-American freshman. From there, he led the Denver Nuggets to the playoffs in his first season. After averaging 20 points per game as a rookie, he was in the exact same draft class as LeBron. There was a real legitimate debate as to who should win rookie of the year. Carmelo Anthony, who averaged 20 points per game and led the Denver Nuggets to the playoffs, or LeBron, who averaged a bit better numbers, but did not make the playoffs. The point being, Melo was in the combo with a young LeBron, and between the ages of 21 and 22, Melo averaged over a combined 27 points and five rebounds per game. In total, 10 players have done that ever, and they are all Hall of Famers. Carmelo also had a run of extreme playoff success, as in 2009, he only averaged 22.8 points per game in the regular season, and then in the playoffs, brought the Nuggets to the Western Conference Finals as they smacked Dirk and the Mavericks in five games in the semis, with Melo averaging over 27 points per game in the playoffs, almost five more points per game than the regular season. The seeds were set for Carmelo Anthony to become one of the greatest players of all time. Instead, again, he's one of the greatest scorers we've ever seen. But when we can see the talent, when we can see how incredible you could be, you do get held to a higher standard. And Melo's last chance at a great playoff run would come in 2013, when in the Eastern Conference semifinals against the Pacers, the Knicks were tied headed into the fourth quarter of game six, when Melo unfortunately finished with a brick fest. He missed a lot. He shot two for seven with three turnovers as the Knicks were bounced. And after that, Carmelo Anthony was never again the main player on a team that advanced past the second round. Overall message being, of course, I'm rooting for the Kevin Durant route here. The figure it out route for Jason Tatum as he has shown that he has the talent, but at this point, the questions about his game are very real. And we are going to see what ends up happening because in the NBA, there really is no waiting around. And we know we have guys like Ja, we have guys like Luka, we have guys like Victor Wembenyama coming, ready to take the place as the best young player in the NBA. Personally, I do not want to give up on Jason Tatum in any way because he is 25. I think he is a product of having
having too much success at too early of an age. I think he's going to learn from this. I think he just cares too much and works too hard for this not to end up honestly, positively for Jason Tate. I'm curious to know what you guys think, because I know he's going to be taking a lot of heat for his play as of late. So thank you for watching. I hope you enjoyed today's video. And remember, huge, huge game four of the NBA Finals giveaway on Coors Light right now. The link to our latest video where we are saving the Los Angeles Lakers and LeBron James will be down below. If you're already subscribed, thank you so much for supporting. You're awesome. We all know it. And as always, have an awesome day and cue that music. If you're still here while the music is cued, here are two videos I think you are definitely going to enjoy. I mean, personally, I think the one on the left might be more your style, but the one on the right looks pretty awesome too. Click one, let me know what you think. And again, have an awesome day.